my name is Kathy, and today I'll be continuing the music arranging portion of the music theory material. But before I do, I wanted to let you know that because I have a great many videos now on many different topics, that I've decided to make several different video playlists so that it's easy to find the videos of greatest interest. So please check out my playlist page. Before you begin this section, it's important that you go through all of the basics of theory playlist material. For this portion of the music theory material, we will be using Sylvia Wood's Music Theory and Arranging Techniques for Folk Harp's book. This is a wonderful book that you will thoroughly enjoy. An accompaniment does not always have to be cordial. Sometimes you can use a melodic accompaniment instead. A counter melody or descant is a melodic line that sounds good when played against the main melody. One example would be in a duet or a choir. If the sopranos are singing the main melody, the altos are probably singing a counter melody. The easiest counter melodies are formed by following the melody in an interval of either a third lower than the melody or a sixth lower. This type of counter melody is called parallel motion. For example, let's try it on a lullaby from France called Phase du du, which means go to sleep, which is at the bottom of page 62 of your book. But first you should play the melody through a few times with the chords in the left hand so that you become familiar with the melody. Don't forget to sharp all the Fs since this piece, in key, this piece is in the key of G major. And this is phase, phase doo doo with just the melody and with just the chord accompaniment. some counter melodies in parallel motion. As illustrated at the bottom of page 62, this time ignore the chord indications. Just as an example, we are going to start with the middle section of the piece marked with an asterisk on the music. Play the melody with your right hand and with your left hand play the notes a third lower. It is a little easier if we lower the left hand an octave from where it was, making it an octave plus a third lower, as illustrated at the top of page 63 of your, your book, example number C. And this is example number B. line, a sixth lower sounds much better than a thir third lower did. Let's now go back and try the middle section that we liked with a third lower, examples A and B, on page 62 and 63 of your book. And this is example number C. And this is example number D. Now, go back to version 1 of Fair Phase Doo Doo on page 62 of your book and try the whole piece. Play the beginning with the left a sixth lower as an example D, the middle section an octave plus a third lower as example B, and the last part, like the beginning, a sixth lower. If you played it correctly, that should have sounded very nice. But why does the counter melody sometimes sound good a third lower and sometimes it sounds better a sixth lower? And why did we pick those intervals instead of a second lower or a fourth lower or something else? The answer to these questions has to do with chords. When you're playing these counter melodies, you are forming small two-note chords, and since chords are made up of intervals of thirds, these sound the best. 
If you invert an interval on of a third, you come up with an interval of a sixth, as illustrated in your book in the middle of page 64. They are the same notes, just in a different order. That's why sixths work as well as thirds. And now for the reason why sometimes a third lower sounds better and sometimes a sixth lower sounds better. A lot of it depends on where the melody note falls in the chord. For example, if the melody note is the root of the chord, i.e. the melody is a C and the chord is a C chord, if you play a third lower, it would be an A note, which is not in a C chord, so it may not sound as good as illustrated at the bottom of page 64 of your book. Instead of getting too technical and thinking too much, though, the best way is just to try either way and see which one you like best. And now for a small hint. Another way to think about which note is a sixth lower is to actually think a third higher and then go down an octave. For example, if the melody note is C, a sixth lower would be an E. Or another way to look at it is a third higher than C is also E and you just play it an octave lower so that the melody stays the highest note. Which, whatever way you want to think about it, you should come up with the same answer. This is because, as we learned a minute ago, if you in invert intervals of a third, you will get a sixth and vice versa. So far, we have added a counter melody. We have been playing in parallel motion with our two hands, both of them going the same direction at the same time. But sometimes it sounds really nice to go opposite directions with your two hands, which is called contrary motion. In the Teach Yourself to Play the Folk Art book in Lesson 4 is Ode to Joy by Beethoven, which is reprinted here on page 65 of your book. Notice how sometimes the two hands go the same direction an octave and a third apart measures 1, 5, and 13, and sometimes they go in opposite directions, measures 3, 7, and 15. This gives the piece some variety. Also, the counter melodies do not continue straight through the entire piece. They last one measure, and then there is a measure of another type of accompaniment. These breaks help give, help give the ear a rest from the same harmonies. And this is Ode to Joy. Thank mm -hmm. you. Experimenting with contrary motions, start your counter melody on one of the notes of the chord and go in the opposite direction from the melody. If that doesn't work well, try starting on a different note of the chord. You may need to skip a note here and there in your counter melody to make it sound good. With this new knowledge, let's see what else we can do with phase doo doo to give it more variety. On page 66 of your book is an arrangement that uses parallel motion contrary motion and some miscellaneous chord notes. Analyze the left hand and try to figure out what was done in each measure and why it was done. Which notes are a third lower than the melody? Which ones are a sixth lower? Where was pa parallel motion used? Where was contrary motion used? Where are the extra notes and how has it changed when the same melody came in more than once? Really examine this piece and use it to get new ideas for your arrangements. And this is phase doo-doo number two on page 66 of your book. Now you try. 
ready to try your own arrangements using counter melodies in these next pieces starting on page 67 of your book, don't use parallel motion and contrary motion throughout the entire piece, just in the places where it sounds really good. The rest of the time, use any of the chordial patterns you have already learned in this book. Good places to try parallel and contrary motion are in scale type passages of several notes that move from one string to the next adjacent string. Parallel motion or contrary motion do not have to be strictly adhered to. For example, if you find a passage that sounds really good in parallel motion, except for one note, just change the one note in your left to something that sounds better. The smiling spring on page 67 is Scottish. The little sandman on page 68 is Dutch and the shepherd leave your crooks on page 68 is a Christmas carol from France. And this is The Smiling Spring. sound like. And this is The Little Sandman. sound like. And this is Shepherd's Leave Your Crooks. sound like. I have a great many videos now on many different topics so I've decided to make several different video playlists so that it's easy to find the videos of greatest interest. So please check out my playlist page. Well that's it for now. To stay up to date with my latest videos make sure to subscribe to this free YouTube channel by clicking the red subscribe button right below this video. Take care.